All right. We're rolling, AJ. Did you like the hey. fancy countdown? Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Dalton, how are you? Good to see you today. Yeah. That's, dude, I'm, I'm so happy that you're here. I'm happy to be doing this with you for, for Dirty Dough, the franchisee, uh, you know, Dirty Dough mini podcast series. So, um, well, yeah, let, let's just jump right into it because uh, I think franchising is always a very u- unique investment kind of mode. And I know you're in a few different franchises. Um, so I guess my first question is, is like uh, among all of the investment opportunities, and maybe you have some of these, but the question I like to ask is, uh, what got what drew you to franchising just in general? Like what uh, what what made you think that would be a, a great you know investment tool or or a business to enter? Yeah, no, great question. Thanks for asking. Um, so the reason I got into franchising specifically was because um, you know I own another uh, company, co-founder of Rev Road which is a venture services firm. And because it's so, we, we help build, uh, you know, companies from basement to buyout. Uh, we're working with all sorts of entrepreneurs. So I love the entrepreneur uh, ecosystem, number one, right? It's in my blood. Um, and because that is such a busy um, endeavor and it's there's so many moving parts to that company and we're growing so quickly. Um, I love other ventures and diversifying my personal portfolio. Um, but I needed some way to buy a business out of a box, if you will. So pull it off the shelf and get it set up and going and just have it function, right? And um, there wasn't a lot of, uh, uh, there's not a lot of opportunity to do that with, you know, the ground floor of uh, franchises, but uh, Dirty Dough is one of those. And I mean, who doesn't love cookies, right? I'm a sleepaholic. <laughs> And so I thought, hey, this could be a good opportunity. So we we jumped in. And I also do love, and I've talked with Bennett Maxwell and, and many others, I love the mission of, you know, it's what's on the inside that counts um, and their focus on mental health. I think they have a great mission. Um, and, uh, you know, they're even though they're newer, they're still ironing out some of the kinks of the business. But I think for the most part, the franchise model works for me because I can literally just set it up and go. So that's one of the reasons we did that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, I, I get that a lot. I hear that a lot from people as far as, you know, why franchise and it really is, there is a lot of work that you have to do and that's involved. There is a lot of like responsibility that you still have. But what I like to say is there's no, like, there's no, what do I do next? Or like, what's next? Like everything is laid out for you and you have the the roadmap ready to go. Um, and I like what you mentioned about dirty dough. The mental health aspects is super, super important. Yeah. And it's not to say, I don't want to minimize this. It's so. not to say that it's not a lot of work and that there's not a lot of challenges and roadblocks that, yeah. that lent themselves still. Cause there, there are, you know, the delays in construction and the additional right. costs that you're not expecting and, you know, and then hiring, you know, I mean, all those things are still a challenge, but you're reducing some of that challenge by, by buying a franchise. So that's part yeah. of why we did it. And, I mean, one thing you have to remember, and this is what my attorney said, you know, from the very beginning is he said, Hey, you know, you're buying someone else's busy business, essentially, like you're going to, you're going to run your own business, but you're buying their model and their system. So you have to be okay with that. And so that's one of the things you have to do is relinquish control in a lot of ways to the corporate office, because it's their business that they've built, but then you run it for yourself uh, under their direction and with their guidance. So pros and cons, right? But I think yeah. uh, if it makes sense for you as an entrepreneur to do it that way, then, you know, franchising is a good option. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that up because that's something that, you know, we have, we have conversations with potential franchisees that when they talk about that, they're like, yeah, uh, they, some people think it's just plug and play and you're like, man, you, you know, there's a lot of, (laughs) there's a lot of work that goes into it for sure. Uh, but you mentioned cookies and that's one thing that, um, I'm always, uh, I always love. And, um, when I was growing up, you know, they used to tell you like, if you want to make friends with everybody or, or never have a bad day, like sell ice cream or cookies or whatever. Right. So, that, <laughs> so that's what I did. Right. Um, what's your favorite cookie from dirty dough? Um, you know, the cookie that I love is the uh, raspberry pop tart cookie. Um, oh yeah. I, I'm a Classic. Cookie, yeah, fan and I love the raspberry filling and I don't eat pop tarts anymore, but I will eat the cookies at least a little bit of one. So <laughs> that's right. That's right. I love that. Um, and as far as, you know, being a, a part of dirty dough, um, and just that whole experience in general, how has it been for you? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, it's been 
pretty good overall, right? Um, what we have to remember is with Dirty Dough, they're also a startup, right? So yeah. they're learning different things along the way. My experience with them has been that when there's feedback and there's, um, you know, things that can be improved upon, you know, better systems and processes, they have an open ear and they're willing to listen and adjust where they can. Um, yeah. As with all businesses, you know, of course, profitability is the main um, goal. So we're trying to help them be as profitable as, as they can by bringing the cost of goods down um, further and further. But my experience overall has been that they are fairly supportive, pretty supportive of the franchisees. And, um, you know, of course, everyone knows that they are hoping to grow, you know, exponentially and really build the business quickly. And so um, they definitely have a growth mindset, which is which is awesome. Yeah, I like that you bring that up because I don't think any franchise is perfect, but I think where where people lack in in that perfection, you can make up a ton for in like listening and like responding quickly okay. and, and things like that. So so yeah, and I and I and I appreciate the candor as well because I think that's one thing that people find refreshing, at least when I'm, you know, when I'm selling stuff, you know, cuz you can always it's always easy to fall back on that like uh just give people reassurance cuz it's not if it's when, but then you you know that they got your back and you know that you're going to keep moving forward and you'll yeah. have support there. So I love, I, I love that uh, answer for sure. Um, I love branding for sure. Go like ahead. The branding is great and it's, you know, it's very uh, unique and distinct and yeah. clean, fresh, and it looks appetizing. So they've done a great job with that. Um, and um, I think they, they are constantly trying to improve, which is what you want with any company. Right. Right. And, and, and again, that's, that's like the, the bread and butter, right. Is where, you know, no one, I don't think a lot of people expect perfection going in. They just want to know that like they, they don't, they won't have to guess, they won't have to keep going. So, so that's, that's really great there. And uh, tell us where you're opening, where, where you got stuff going up. Yeah. Great question. So we are first looking to open American Fork, um, Utah here, you know, local, um, that very cool. The, the opening day, I think, is going to be June 9th. Uh, we've moved that back a few times, but I think we'll be ready for June 9th, so we're excited for that. And then we have the rights to a franchise in Nashville as well, which we're going to pause for just a moment to see how things go in American Fork and get that up and going first. But then Nashville, Tennessee, hopefully, is the next you know big area that we're focusing on. Very cool. Well, I hope everybody, uh, you know, I hope American Fork has a badass grand opening, and I hope it, I hope it goes really well. So... Uh, I hope everybody goes, but AJ, thanks so much for, uh, taking the time to be here and, and, uh, chatting with me. So, uh, yeah, everybody go, go visit, uh, American Fork and thank you so much, AJ. Keep eating cookies. Thanks you guys. Appreciate it, Dalton. See ya. <laughs> of course.